Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overclocker magazine and today I'm here to talk to you about the Aorus Water Force 2 X360 Ice Edition. So as the name suggests, this is the second version of the Aorus Water Force coolers. I tested the previous generation I think about a year ago or maybe two years ago and it was an okay cooler. I didn't mind it and so forth but it didn't blow me away. So you can imagine my surprise when I got this one. This one was just different and it was improved in all conceivable ways and I actually do mean that. So number one, what is the price going to be? Well, I actually have no idea. I mean, Gigabyte just showed off this cooler at CES right now and I looked for pricing. There just simply isn't any. But given from the previous generation cooler and how much that cost, I think we are looking at about five grand, maybe $270, perhaps even a bit more. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little bit more than that because like I said earlier, this cooler is improved in every conceivable way. But it's more than just me saying it. It's something that I actually experienced because it actually managed to outperform the best cooler that i had at my disposal and that was the h150i lcd which i also reviewed a few years ago that said i'm going to tell you what Aorus claims about this cooler which is to them why it actually performs better so the first claim they make is that the block itself has actually been redesigned so we are talking about a three percent increase in fin surface area we're also talking about the blades in the pump being eight percent bigger and the tubing as well. The inner diameter has actually been increased to 7.8 millimeters. Now, I don't know what it was before, but either way, all of these three things come together to give you 44% increase in pump flow rate. In terms of the fans as well, they've actually made improvements there. And each of them, I think the claim is that they've improved the static pressure by 14% and 22% respectively. So, I mean, if you put together the improvements in the fans, the improvements in the tubing and the improvements in the block itself, it does stand to reason that it would perform better than the previous generation cooler that they had. But comparing it with the H150i LCD, as I said, this one actually came out to be about three to four degrees cooler consistently. Is this a scientific measure? No, because the weather changes and so forth, but it was consistent in that it was better than that cooler. But to me, what I really appreciate this is how easy it is to live with this cooler, just managing it and even installing it. So one of the key selling points for this cooler is actually the easy latch mag fans, I think they call them. So basically these are just magnetic fans and how you attach them is actually you just daisy chain them. So each fan has a female and male connector of sorts, which is magnetic and you just clip them one next to the other and that's it. There's one cable that you can attach on either side of your fan complex. And this is what leads to the fan control. It leads to the RGB control as well. So in terms of just the sheer number of cables that Gigabyte or Aorus rather has managed to eliminate from this cooler, that's incredible. And this method of connecting your fans and just managing cables is something that I hope other vendors actually look to. I'm not saying they should lift this one directly, but it's something to be said about just simplifying the entire process. With that said as well, there's actually only two cables here. There's a power cable that come from the block at least. There's a power cable and your comms cable. That's literally it. And you can control everything from just these two cables. So what I do, however, is actually plug the RGB aspect of the fans and so forth directly onto my motherboard RGB header. And I plug the fan header as well onto the motherboard. Reason I do this is because I have better motherboard control over the lighting and the fans rather than going through the Gigabyte Control Center. So why do I not want to go through the Gigabyte control center? Well, it's not that it's not improved over what Gigabyte had before, but it's still not quite there. I mean, I'm super happy with it in terms of user interface and so forth, but in terms of functionality, it's just not quite where it should be, even though it's a massive improvement from what they had before. And to further illustrate this, even though using the LCD using setting the lighting and so forth worked flawlessly for the most part. I found that if you cycle through three of the profiles, that's enthusiast one, two, three, or what have you, at some point the LCD will stop responding. So you'll keep cycling through the profiles and nothing will happen, let alone the fans changing color and so forth. None of this stuff is going to happen. But the funny thing is that if you type something onto the LCD, 
right from the Gigabyte Control Center, it actually does update. And to me, that speaks to a software bug, which again brings us back to one of the key criticisms I have about Gigabyte anything. It's always the software. The hardware guys come to the party. The software guys don't even show up to the parking lot, it seems, many of the times. So it's not a train smash because, as I said, you can plug directly onto the motherboard and use that. However, it is something that is worth being aware of. Fortunately for me, I just set one profile, one graphic, and I'm done with it. So I generally don't need the control center. I had a bit of an issue in terms of the tubing. So where the tubing connects to the radiator, you are told that you shouldn't actually twist that bit. And fair enough, you shouldn't twist it. However, if you don't twist it, there's no way you'll be able to get the magnetic cable plugged into the fans where you need it. Yes, you can plug it on the other side, but the thing is that's too far. So I wouldn't be able to use those cables with the supplied cable length that I have to connect everything to the motherboard. So I essentially had to twist where it said I shouldn't twist and you probably shouldn't do this as well, but it is an oversight on gigabytes parts in terms of telling you not to do this when essentially there is no other way to connect the cable to the radiator. But with just those two things, those are the only complaints that I have about this cooler. Outside of that, I think the performance is fantastic. But when it comes to using the Water Force 2 X360 Ice Edition, this experience is second to none. Yes, it's not perfect, but in as far as the overall impressions that I got from this cooler and having used it for several months, Aorus has done a fantastic job on this one. And is it worth the money? Yeah, I think it is actually worth the money because software is something that they can always fix, right? So at some point you won't have these issues that I had. But outside of that, when you look at just the aesthetic elements, the tasteful design, just the attention to detail is actually something that I've never witnessed before from Aorus. And this is the first time I'm experiencing that and I'm absolutely blown away. I'm pretty much stunned at how surprisingly good this cooler was, especially given my experiences with the first one, which was nowhere near as impressive as this one. Either way, with that said, let me know what you guys think of this X360 Ice Edition cooler. It does come in black, of course, as well. But regardless, let me know what you think of these coolers. Is it something that you might entertain, particularly given that it's relatively expensive at five grand plus? Anyway, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, remember to share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Until then, take care of yourselves and peace, yeah?